What's going on everybody? It's Rob from Hometown Ghost Stories and today we're going to talk about the Hope Diamond for this Cursed Possession side episode. So the Hope Diamond story begins in India. A merchant is believed to have stolen the diamond out of an idol beginning the curse. He would sell this to a traveling French merchant. It's said that within days, the Indian merchant would just drop dead. Now the new holder of the diamond brought it back to France where he sold it to King Louis XIV. Once again, within a week, the previous owner would be dead. This time, the man was torn apart by wild dogs. The diamond would be recut after this, and the man who did the work would soon after be murdered by his own son, who then took his own life. Now, it would stay within the royal family for a little over 100 years at this point and be worn for ceremonies. Tragedy would once again strike for the owner, and in 1793, King Louis XVI and his wife Marie Antoinette were beheaded. Looting during the French Revolution shortly before this would cause the diamond to go missing for several years. After this, it was found in the possession of a merchant named Daniel Ellison in 1812 and would once again be sold to royalty, this time King George IV of the United Kingdom. Within months of selling the diamond, Daniel would take his own life. Now, King George acquired a huge amount of debt during his reign and upon his death, the diamond would once again be sold off to Henry Philip Hope. Now, of course, this is where the diamond would become known as the Hope Diamond. It would pass from Philip to his nephew, Henry Thomas Hope, after a family standoff, and then afterwards to his grandson, Lord Francis Hope. Lord Francis Hope would marry May Yaoi, who we covered her ordeal with the curse in episode 9. It turns out that Lord Francis would also go bankrupt and sold the diamond. And shortly after he sold the diamond, he lost his foot in a hunting accident. Now, from 1901 to 1908, it would change hands several times, and the owners are a little bit murky, but we know that eventually wealthy Russian prince Kananovsky would purchase it. Within a few days of purchasing it, he lent it to his lover to perform on stage with as she was an actress. She obliged him, and on the night of the performance, Prince Kananovsky stood up in the audience and shot and killed her while she was on stage. Now he wouldn't stand trial for this because just a short time later, about two days, three days, varying reports on that, a group of revolutionists would find him and stab him to death. A Greek jeweler named Simon Manakarides, that name might be wrong, I'm sorry to uh, all our Greek listeners, very tough name to pronounce. Now he would purchase it from the prince's heirs and within months, once again, tragedy would strike and he would drive his car that had him, his wife, and his two children accidentally over a cliff. The Sultan of Turkey was the next owner, and the man that he sent to pick up the diamond would eventually die in a ship accident sinking in the ocean. Now the Sultan still got his diamond, and eventually a robbery was planned, and there were three, some, some say two, thieves that went to try to steal this diamond, but they were caught, three men were tortured and then hanged for their involvement in this robbery. So within like a year, the Sultan would then sell the diamond to Simon Rosenau, who in turn sold it to Pierre Cartier. Now Cartier, after some maneuvering, would eventually sell it to Evelyn McLean. McLean was a big socialite in her day and she would often be spotted wearing the diamond in public and she would even joke about the curse. However, even though she was joking about the curse, Let's just go over a list of things that happened to her while she was in possession of this diamond. Her mother-in-law would die almost immediately upon the purchase of the diamond, followed by her nine-year-old child running out in the street, getting hit by a car and dying. A few years later, her husband would go insane, be thrown into a mental asylum where he would die. And finally, as we've seen with some of these other people, she eventually went bankrupt right before her death. Now, upon her going bankrupt, uh, the diamond was supposed to be sent to her grandchildren, but not until they all reached the age of 25. The problem with this was she was in so much debt that it was declared that her diamond collection, which she had a big one, would be sold to cover her debts to all these creditors and other people. Now, one man would purchase all of these diamonds and his name was Harry Winston. What he did with the collection was he would bring them to exhibits and also to charities and show them off 
over the course of like the next 10 years. After this, he decided that he would donate the Hope Diamond to the Smithsonian National Museum in Washington, DC. Now you might think that this is where this story ends. However, there is one more family that was affected by the curse of the Hope Diamond. James Todd was the postman that was tasked with delivering the Hope Diamond to the Smithsonian after it was donated. He was successful in delivering the diamond. However, immediately after, he would get into an accident and shatter his leg. Upon healing from this leg injury, he would once again get into an accident, and this time he would injure his head. So not going really well for this man. And then it said that his wife and his dog would also die suddenly, and then part of his house would burn down. Many believe that the curse is now broken because the way that the diamond exchanged hands was through a charitable cause, rather than a sale. However, the question is, was the curse lifted or is it just once again laying dormant until it somehow switches hands again? Well, welcome in ladies and gentlemen. This has been a nice little side content a really happy story about the Hope Diamond. <laughs> really just a feel good story. <laughs> that was charming. I I started laughing at the end and I I don't mean to laugh at others' misfortunes. But as I was telling that that part of the story where like he gets into the two car accidents, his wife dies, his dog dies, the the house burns down. All I can think of as I'm telling the story is the scene from the movie Life where Eddie Murphy's reading the letter and he's like uh you know your sister died and the guy's like jenny he's like he's like no no not jenny it was marlene <laughs> he's like oh no no jenny died too oh and your mom died your dad died uh turns out that there's been a horrible tornado where the rest of your family died <laughs> the crops didn't come in on account of the frost but don't worry she's taking care of, your neighbor's taking care of the dogs as long as they get over the worms your dog has worms. <laughs> and then they're all, everybody's like, want me to, anybody else want me to read their letters? They're all like, no, no, no. no yeah. So like, that's all I'm thinking of as I'm trying to like read this serious story and I can't stop laughing. I'm just like, we're yeah. gonna, just going to leave it's like, it in. It's, like it's not cursed and just everything wrong is <laughs> happening at the same time. That is, that is wild. And there's so, there's so many different kinds of deaths. Like it's just, it's insane. I was going through some of them. <clears throat> did you allude to the princess who was quote torn to pieces by a French mob? No, I didn't That's see that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a temporary wearer, princess de Lambert. I tried to do my best French interpretation of that. Not as bad yeah. as your Greek one. My wife will let you hear about that one later. I know. Uh, I don't was quote torn, that. quote torn to pieces by a French mob. Crazy. Those, those French mobs were ruthless. Yeah. So that must've been when it was with obviously in the 1700s or something like that. Yeah, there was some was other stuff. From. There was some other stuff that I left out because I was like, I was trying to validate as much of it as I could. Mm -hmm. And the only one that the timeline's a little murky on is that Prince Sir, the Russian prince who gave it to his girlfriend to wear on stage and he just stood up and shot her. Um, the time on that, like some people are saying 1600s, but that doesn't make sense to me because. That's not when, like, the diamond came from India in the 1700s to France. So, like, I don't know, man. Like, I just kind of threw it where I thought it was supposed to be. So, if that's completely wrong, apologies. Some of this stuff is tough to look up. Man, it is. Yeah, it goes Go back to the the typical old record keeping. Might not be super. Um... Yeah, timeline you... might be a little bit off, but I mean the the death is legit yeah so is legit. it's just when did it happen exactly yeah so but yeah the, the <laughs> different so when i was going into the hope diamond everyone's like it's a cursed object it's a cursed possession it goes back to when i did the christmas episode and may yaoi was part of the that episode where she was born in that hotel she married um francis hope or you know whatever whichever hope she married and you know it was just a story about like the diamond causing people to go broke so I'm like, okay, the curse is like you get this expensive diamond and then you go broke, you know, whatever. And I'm like, I'm just going to look into it a little bit. And I start reading it. I'm like, okay. So it starts with a guy getting torn apart by wild dogs. And then it goes to a king that got beheaded. 
and then you just read like everyone that touched this this diamond in some form or fashion like the guy that drove his whole family over the over a um cliff by accident just like what is going on like how you know you just there's people are like well you know something long enough you're gonna you're gonna have some tragedy around it it's like yeah but like this isn't like all i could think of was you talked about the greek guy Mm -hmm. and then you talked about him almost driving or him driving his family off a cliff and all i could think about was i went to greece over the summer and almost drove my family off a cliff really oh i didn't tell you this story this is no this this has nothing to do with cursed possession so i'll go quickly over this i am uh when I went to Greece, I was not very good at driving standard. I hadn't done it in a long time. I was like, ah, I can, f- I'll figure it out. I'll remember how to do this. Anyways, I was really bad for like the first hour. Then I got the hang of it. But then doesn't I'm sound taking, like it. I'm taking the fam. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> I take the family to this beach. We try to hit a different beach every day. The beaches out there are absolutely gorgeous. We're in yeah. Greece, right? And the GPS takes us like off this side road. I'm like, ah, here we go. Unpaved which is already I'm already in like this really small hybrid car standard with absolutely no power behind it whatsoever. Anyways, the, it starts going down and it's a cliff and there's no guardrails because we're in Greece and there's just death on the other side. And I'm like halfway down and it's getting steeper and steeper. I'm like, okay, I can make it down this hill, but there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to make it back up. Like, this is not good. <laughs> so I, I, I'm like, I got, I, I we can't do this. We're going to go to a different beach. So I, I try to do a three point turn. Long story short, the car kept stalling out because I'm on this massive dirt road and the car has no power. And I'm getting closer and closer to this cliff. Every time that the car stalls out, I would roll closer to the edge. (laughs) It got to a point where I'm like, family out of the car. If I die, I'm dying alone. And they literally got out of the car and watched me just struggle with this thing. I managed to get the thing turned around and then some other car drove down. I just stopped and was like, you wait. You wait, you take the, you take this car up this hill for me because I'm a stupid American and I can't get it done. And he did, but even even he stalled out a couple of times. He's like, this car can't handle this this road. I'm like, all right, I understand that. But uh, yeah, that was me almost driving my family off a cliff. And that's all I could think about when you're talking about the Greek guy and then the family dying off a cliff. I'm like, damn, that sounds familiar. Maybe, maybe it was a similar situation. And that story, every time you tell it, stresses me out. <laughs> the worst was it was the morning over there so it was the, i don't remember what time it was maybe like 11 in the morning but back home it's like 4 a.m i'm calling paul haystay because he knows how to drive standard like trying to get some info like dude what am i doing wrong here anyways also almost destroyed the car because i'm frying this thing I'm like maybe i'll try a second gear that isn't the play <laughs> keep it in first gear anyways back to the hope diamond that's my little side story Celine uh, dion uh got the honor of wearing the hope diamond at the 1998 academy awards was that one of the only four times it's left the it's only left the Smithsonian like four times since it's gone there in, in like the last 60 years. So uh, apparently it must what, have because it's on her it? neck. 1998. Was that something to do with Titanic? Yeah, she wore the Hope Diamond and then the Titanic sunk. Man, <laughs> <awful. add> up. <laughs> it's all interconnected we said that this timeline's a little murky guys so. yeah, we're, trying to, we're trying to work it out <laughs> no but but just everything around this diamond like um the other the other one that's crazy is like when you look up the hope diamond you'll see the picture you usually see is this woman wearing it and that's mrs mclean she's the one that bought it and from cartier Let's go back to the Titanic real quick. Hang on. I'm sorry. You know the reason I brought that up, right? She sang the Titanic song. Titanic yeah, came out in yeah, 1997. Yeah, okay. We, oh, okay. Okay. Well, you guys made me sound absolutely insane. I'm no, sorry. Just joking, <laughs> right. on. All right. So it was that obvious that you guys made a joke about it, but didn't want to be like, yeah, but just you're right. Yeah, that's why she wore it. You have derailed right, you guys this. Can, right, you have derailed the side content. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> she. The Hope Diamond right. has nothing to do with the Titanic. Other than yeah. Celine Dion wore it when in at the Academy Award show. They were trying to play it off. Guys, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? I could, the Hope I Diamond hear, I was couldn't... not the Hope Diamond was not the diamond in the Titanic. Yes, we are aware. Why is this a thing? Why have we been on this for four minutes? We can move on. We can move on. I, I went across the room to listen to you guys like and have a funny moment that I realized I didn't turn my speakers on, so I couldn't even hear what you were saying. Yeah, so I, I can't realize back. we're generally a podcast and that's the way everyone <laughs> listens to us. <laughs> uh so mrs mclean the one who bought it from cartier when you look up the hope diamond and you search images there's a woman wearing it it's usually the picture of mrs mclean or one of the pictures of her wearing it and 
she would joke about the curse. She'd be like, oh, yeah, it's cursed. It's cursed. It's cursed. She buys it. Like I said, the things that happened her her mother in law dies immediately. Her nine year old son gets hit by a car and dies. Her husband legitimately goes insane, like to the point that they throw him in a mental asylum and he dies in the mental asylum. And then just like with a bunch of these other people, she goes completely broke by the end of her life. It's <laughs> just like, but but she was joking about the curse the whole time. And she yeah, thought that these good. were going to go through, you know, pass through her family. She had that whole clause like it's going to my grandchildren, but they can't touch it till they're 25. And then the government was like, uh, yeah, well, guess what? That's not happening. You're selling it because of all the massive debt you're in. Yeah, it's nothing you can do about that. Can we go back to the Titanic real quick? So the Hope Diamond, it, the, the diamond in the Titanic was supposed to be based off of the Hope Diamond. Anyways, right. all right, we can continue on now. So, all right, back to the timeline. Thanks, Jesse. Well, this is... Do I'm, you right, wanna... I'm, right about, I'm right about everything, okay? And you guys make me sound crazy, all right? Nobody has been fighting you on this is the thing. Like nobody's saying anything. I just wanted I just want you to remember when I was going through tough times, right? Dealing with a breakup, you came downstairs and I was drinking vodka on the floor listening to the song from the Titanic. So I don't, I don't want you to know this is a this is at the time. This, we're a ghost podcast, and you guys want to know the scariest thing I've ever seen. No, no, this is this my, my hopes and dreams have been to turn our ghost podcast into a Titanic podcast. We're only gonna talk about the Titanic. <laughs> All right. Well, Dave, do you have anything else to add about the uh, Hope Diamond here? Any idea how much it's worth? I do not know how much it. it's worth. You do or you want to know? You do I want to. I do not know and I would like to know. Mm, you want to take a crack at it? Jesse's Googling it right now. No, I'm not. Yes, he, he is. He doesn't get to guess. Uh, 5.6 million. 200 to Hang 250 on. I'm million. Hang on. 7.5 million. Okay. 200 to 250 million. Jesus. Uh, and, and that got donated to the Smithsonian. That's, that's like, so much. Yeah. Oh, so fun fact 7.5 million is how much the Titanic cost to build. That's why I guess God. that. Oh, my God. I hate this <laughs> so much. <laughs> um, that's too much money. Yeah. Quarter uh, of a billion. Who, who donated it? Who ended up donating it? Uh, it was either Henry or Harry Winston. He's the guy who yeah, Henry. who ended up buying it from the McLean family after she passed away. And he didn't donate it right away. He was he would bring it to exhibits and and events to display not just that diamond. She had like a massive diamond collection. Like she had some of the she. There's one named after her, the McLean diamond. That's that's how she, much she was into this jewelry. Probably why she went broke. How financially stable is this guy? Dude, any idea how much he bought it off her for? No. Not probably not close to 200 million, but no, probably not. Either way, imagine spending, let's say half that, and I doubt that was what he spent on it. Imagine spending like 100 million and then being financially stable enough to be like, ah, I don't need to sell this. Yeah. <laughs> Eat those Tax. losses and give it away. Tax right off. Right Maybe to he the couldn't afford it. Just like, man, I can't afford, but I don't want to die. By selling it, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. really believed in the curse. Well, that's that's the other that's the big theory is that everything that happened with this diamond is because it was originally stolen out of an idol in India. So, like, it was an eye or some it was embedded in some sort of idol. That merchant stole it, sold it to the French merchant, and as it passed hands, it just wreaked havoc because it never passed hands just to, as like a gift. It was. Sold it was every sold which way, or stolen, stolen, because yep. um, it disappeared for a little bit there in France before it reappeared, and it was bigger. It originally started off as a much bigger diamond, and it was cut down a few times. I think it was almost double the size originally, which is crazy. So it's also crazy just how many people ended up with it and then they died poor, or they they just yeah. went broke. Yeah. And you I either died was... or you went broke or both. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Like, and rich, rich people, like people that were, you know, royalty. Ro two, you know, you had the beheading of, of King Louis and Marie Antoinette. King George, who bought it, went, went broke. They think that some of these sales were like when it was quote unquote stolen, that it wasn't even stolen. 
They were probably just selling it on the they, side. And then they were saying selling it, it on the side so that they didn't have to look weak in the fact that they had mm. to sell this stuff. And, and yeah, man. And then like the hopes went broke. Uh, the McLeans went broke as we've hit on a few times. Just It's just an absolutely wild story. So I never thought we were going to get this. I thought I was going to look into this for five minutes and I was going to be like, nope, not doing this, doing something else. And I'm like, you know what? ties into another one of our episodes that's crazy and the story is actually a bananas so we might as well hit on the hope diamond yeah and it seems like the the curse must have ended or it's like you said maybe it's waiting. just waiting but i mean the smithsonian has it and since they've gotten it they're they've only done better attendance has gone up and they've made money since uh since getting it so it's the smithsonian i don't know if there's much that you could do to make the smithsonian fail but that's uh that's the Hope Diamond. That's a. Uh, I had no idea. I knew there was a curse around it, but I had no idea it was that deep. What were they doing? Mail like sending it with a mailman there, like just a regular ass mailman to the Smithsonian. Like imagine if that was your like. We got this two hundred million dollar. Yeah, diamond. I think, I, I think I, as that. I mean, maybe. I would retire or quit. And like, yeah, well, you know, uh, I'm not going to deliver this mail today. Just yeah. into the pocket. We're going to yeah. test this curse out today. Yeah. <laughs> take a little trip over to France and get torn apart by a mob. <laughs> or wild dogs. He was and eating my wolves. Drive over a cliff. Like, just, yeah. Crazy deaths. The, those were all crazy. The one that stood out was definitely the, the Prince story, though, where he just gave it to his lover to wear on stage and just stands up in the middle of the audience and shoots her for no reason. And then gets stabbed to death himself three days later. Hmm. Crazy. Those French people. That's Russian. Just, that's, oh, it was Russian? He was Russian, yeah. He was Russian. Yeah. The French was the mob. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. French mob. Yep. You do not want to get in the way of a French mob when they're retreating from something. <laughs> <laughs> Tear you in the way. We gotta get through. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyways, uh, so anything else you want to touch on the Hope Diamond there? No, I'm good for now. Unless you guys had any questions. No, my heart will go on. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, we'll be back on Tuesday with another live episode. Uh, so thank you guys for tuning in. If you enjoy this content, make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, share with everyone that you love. And, uh, and you could have gotten this great content two days earlier if you're on Patreon. Mm -hmm. So thank you, thank you to the patrons, and I hope you enjoyed this. And um, yeah, make sure you share it with women and children first. Oh, <laughs> thank you guys <laughs> for tuning in. We'll be back on Tuesday with another episode. Rob, nice job on the Hope Diamond episode, and uh, we will see you guys next time. Later, thanks. Guys. See ya. This is awkward. I'm trying to play the video. It's not working. Here we go, and see you later.